Hey guys, Weep here. Welcome back to another video by Variety MMOs. In today's video, we're going to be talking about everything to do with the Ranger class. We'll be talking about pros and cons of the Ranger class. We will be talking about abilities and show you a good skill build to set up so you can farm really quickly. We'll also be talking about the stats based on that build and what you should be aiming for. We'll be talking about branch damage and we'll be talking about how branch damage is really important and we'll talk about various ways to get it and which branch damage you should be aiming for. We'll also go into gear and gems and help you figure out which gear that you should be aiming for with your class. Let's talk about pros and cons for the ranger class. So some pros, it's the easiest class to level. The reason that it's easy to level is because it has a really good kit when leveling up and it's also a kiting god. The ability to attack while moving. So not only are you able to kite really well due to your abilities, but some of the abilities actually move and do damage at the same time, taking kiting to a whole new level. This is why leveling is so easy and why I recommend the Ranger class above any others for new players. The Ranger class is one of the best field farmers if you have the right skill set up. If you have the wrong one, it can prove quite problematic. Cons. Very vulnerable to melee classes that stack CC. So you do have a lot of dodge and quite a bit of mobility. However, if a melee class gets on top of you and chain CCs you, you're not very tanky and you get hit by every type of CC available. So they will stun you and CC you into the ground and probably one shot you if they have enough CC and enough damage to do it. Next up is mobility skills push you out of the best farming area. What I mean by this is that your mobility skills that you use to use less potions will jump to the side of the area, not so far that you would run back, but it kind of goes off to the side so it's only fighting 1 to 3 mobs instead of sitting in the middle and fighting say 10 to 20 mobs like I am right now and not actually using potions. The third con is that the main weapon doesn't share with any other class. So other classes are able to share some of their weapons. For example, a warrior and a Valkyrie uses both the main hand and off hand. But when it comes to a ranger, it's not very alt friendly because you can't trade over your weapon. Let's talk about the skill build. I would like to mention that this build is aimed at pulling groups of mobs together as fast as possible and you will do it so quickly that if you're standing beside somebody else you'll be tagging the mobs much faster than any other class will be able to and that's the objective of this build so the build starts off with true shot so true shot is an aoe cone ability which does a lot of damage and hits a wide aoe cone so it's obvious that you're going to want to use this because that's pretty much your bread and butter ability next up is blasting gust so Blasting Gust is one of the two defensives I have in this build. These two abilities down here, which we will talk about, are not a part of their build. They're extra abilities that you can interchange depending on what area you're in. In an area with a tightly packed mobs, I use these two abilities to give me a better defensives so I don't use as many potions. So Blasting Gust basically jumps back and knocks down your enemies, so it's basically a defensive which is interchangeable with your other abilities. Will of the Wind. So Will of the Wind, as you can obviously see, hits AoE and it has a lot of charges and does damage. So you're going to want to use this quite frequently. It also jumps towards the mob, so it keeps you towards the center of the mob pack rather than to the outside, which some of the ranger's abilities can do for you. Next up, let's have a look at Spin Blade. So Spin Blade is one of the other optional skills that I have on the build. The reason I have it though it's because like Will of the Wind, it brings you in closer, so it brings you in towards the middle of the mob pack. But it also hits at a circle and stuns them. And it will usually use it pretty quickly along with another AoE to wipe out all the mobs. So it will AoE stun, so you don't take as much HP loss and it'll kill them all before the sun runs out. Next up is Spinning Shot. So Spinning Shot pierces 6 enemies and it does a nice amount of damage, has 3 charges and a very, very quick animation so this is another one of your bread and butter skills what you're going to be using very frequently on this build piercing arrow is another skill that some people like to use because it does a lot of damage and does a knockdown the problem is is the animation time so while you're casting that ability and while you're waiting for this to go off you have a bunch of enemies in your back attacking you in the back costing too much hp that is why i generally don't use piercing arrow next up is call of the earth call of the earth will raise your defense and heal you so it's basically something to use pretty much on cooldown. Flurry of Arrows. So Flurry of Arrows pushes you back a bit and can sometimes get you out of your farming area. But that's what these two abilities kind of counter. And it also 
hits a lot of enemies and does decent damage with a lot of charges. So another one of your bread and butter abilities. Next up is Descending Arrow. So generally Descending Arrow will be used when there's a lot of mobs around you. It's very high damage and will generally kill any mob that it hits in one shot and can take out a lot of mobs. It has a longer cooldown but it's incredibly incredibly powerful. Let's talk about stats. So your attack power which is basically the power of your weapons plus your defensive power which is effectively the power of your armor. Together this combines to make your character base. This is your character strength. Your family base is the power of your black spirit and basically anything that's a countdown like knowledge, amity, etc. So your family base and character base together equal your combat power. So basically it's an accumulation of all these equal your combat power for the character that you're logged in on. Let's look at our secondary stats. So our secondary stats would be crit chance, crit damage, attack speed and move speed. So HP and MP can be considered stats, but they're not really relevant and not something that I would aim for in any particular build. So your number one priority on your secondary stats would be attack speed. The reason I say this is because it speeds up your animation and your skills and it's viable on all classes and should be capped as quick as possible. I was testing multiple builds so my stats are out right now, but attack speed is definitely your priority. Next up would be crit chance. So you want to try to crap out crit chance. As you can see here, I've gone over 30% crit chance and you'll want to avoid that at all possible. Your next priority would be critical damage. Now you may be thinking, why do I prioritize critical damage below critical chance? The reason is, is because there's no direct way to go and try to get crit damage right now. The only way to get it, which we'll talk about more about later, is a way that you can't really farm or put into your gear slots currently in global. So it's really hard to obtain. So you get it when you have the chance, but you're mainly looking for crit chance first. Next up is movement speed. Movement speed you can have if you really want, as you can see I have a bit of it, but it's not something that you particularly aim for. Branch damage. So let's open this up. So increased skill damage on AAL. AAL is about an average of a 10% damage increase on the abilities that it's applied to. So ret makes your abilities hit more enemies. A hib chance of extra damage so there's a 10 percent chance of doing 70 percent extra damage but it does not multiply with the crit so you can't crit and then do 70 percent of that and one shot someone it doesn't work and the breathe gives you an extra 10 percent crit rate so as you can see here my stats are kind of all over the place because of the different builds that i've been testing but for this particular build your focus is going to want to be on aal as much as you possibly can try to cap it out and the next one is going to want to go Labrie. So basically we're going a static 10% extra damage across whatever abilities AL is on. And two of our abilities do not have AL and it has Labrie. So we sick Labrie on to get some extra create on those two abilities. Let's talk about gear. So here we're looking at the main weapons for the Ranger. Let's go up here and have a look at the orange ones. So in the orange there's actually two weapons that have two sockets. And the sockets are your primary objective. So if you look at the ultimate bears longbow it has two sockets and if you look at the Laverto longbow it also has two sockets but you'll notice that there's a massive price difference now you're probably initially thinking that the reason the price difference is so big is because there's minus attack speed on this one and crit chance on this one but that's not necessarily the case so after gems trying to always get two gems on your gear your second priority is actually the base cp so if you look here, the base CP is 95, but if you look at the other bow, it's actually 86. Now you're probably thinking, hey, this is only 9 AP, but your base AP is what's used as a scaler when you upgrade your weapon. So when you upgrade it to a weapon, say an Ultimate Bears Longbow and a Laverto Longbow to plus 30, the difference between the bows could be potentially 30, 40, 50 CP, not 9. So the CP gap at base is actually the second priority that you're looking for when you're looking for a piece of equipment. Your third priority is obviously the stat line as we just looked at. You're not going to want minus 2% att attack speed. Let's talk gems. So in the beginning of Black Desert Mobile, say the first month, it's going to be extremely hard or nigh on impossible to obtain yellow and orange crystals with your correct stats. So a better way to do this is to obtain purples. So if you look at my gear, you'll notice that a majority of my gear has plus 7 purple crystals. So they're magic crystal strengths. So they always have plus 5 to plus 7 attack. 
Next up, you'll have your branch damage. I don't need threat damage. I actually don't have the optimal gems right now for trying different builds. But the gems that you want for this particular build will always be the maximum attack you can get and the AL damage because the AL damage is what is the main branch used in this build. AL followed up by a bit of Labrie. So get all of these gems if you can and hold on to any other gems that don't have this current stat lines because you can fuse them or use them for other builds when you get a little bit further into the game. Okay, so we've mentioned branch damage quite a few times throughout this video. So let's talk a little bit more about branch damage so you have a fully understanding of how it works. So branch damage applies to abilities that you have equipped on. For example, True Shot, I can apply either Ale damage to it or I can apply it to Labrieve damage to it. And the ways to obtain your branch damage are here. So first off, you go into Black Spirit and go into Equip Lightstone. So we all know probably the higher tier of these, the more stats they have on them. For example, a purple one has one stat line and one main ability. However, a yellow will have two. So as you go higher and higher, up to orange and red, you'll get more stat lines. And you're hoping, the stat lines that you're hoping for here would be priority number one, crit damage, because it is so insanely hard to obtain. And your second priority for this particular build would be to get as much AL damage as you can. It is very hard to get these, so don't force it. If you can't get AL damage, just put on crit damage instead. So if you want to see what exactly stats that you have in here, you can click on equipped effect and go down here and see all of your substats that are currently available from your black spirit next up let's have a look at accessories so if you go down here and go to accessory resonance what this is is basically when you acquire your jewelry and for example you plus all your jewelry plus three and above you get all branch damage plus one percent i recommend another video going to plus eight blues because it is very cheap gives you stats and it also gives you plus branch damage six percent the way i'm getting plus six percent that is why my branch damage looks like this when i have so many stats compared to other people my build is nowhere near complete yet i need to get rid of these stats and go more ale damage so your priority if following this build would be to get 40 percent ale and the rest of your damage would be on labrieve if you can get it if you have a little bit of a hib and threat it doesn't overly matter it's just not really being used that covers everything in today's video if you did like the video, please do like, comment, and subscribe. If you'd like to check out some of the other content that we work on while playing Black Desert Mobile and other games, you can check out our website over here on the left or join our community Discord, which is linked below the video. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.